as as him as a player, um, you know, I, I was I was checking out NFL.com last night. Um, the strengths that they had were were, were numerous. Uh, he's, they say he's a humble and he's a focused kid. He loves football, athletic frame, uh, NFL ready. Um, physical. And, I like and the fact that he actually likes contact. I, I like the fact that he's, he's a stiff arm guy because I think that's important as a as a runner. Yeah. Or, or Love, any, anytime you have the ball, they, they they said it's almost it's almost it's almost a drawback in that he likes he likes contact. He almost likes it too much because they want him to get away from tacklers as opposed to trying to run them over, which kind of makes sense. You don't want to give the guy an opportunity to trip you up, but. He likes you know, he likes punishing people. That's not a bad that's not a bad trait for a football player. Okay. Um, the other thing is uh, Thomas Thomas has actually been without his parents since he was nine years old. Wow. Um, his his uh, his mother passed away. She she got an infection due to an abscess tooth. This was a crazy story, uh, and it led to liver and kidney failure. Wow. And his father died of a heart attack a year later. He so he was raised by older siblings. Uh, he was a three-sport athlete in high school, and then he moved on to Nassau Community College for right two here. years uh, and was rated the second-best junior college tight end nationally after a, after a sophomore season that saw him uh, have 23 catches for 433 yards. Again, big gains uh, and three touchdowns in eight games. So, And then, uh, then off to Indiana. So congratulations to Ian Thomas. Yeah. Yes. And, and for those of you, uh, hopefully, hopefully, there's a few people listening who actually got to see him play in a few games for for the Lions, and uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him and see how he yeah. does. So it's, it's like following the Baldingers, you know. That's they're, true. They're Massapequa boys. Massapequa guys. I, I went to high school with uh, or junior high school with Gary. Did you? Yeah. Who I think is on TV now. I'm, I always get them confused. I, I know Brian, Brian was. Brian is, but I think there's, I think two of them are on TV. I'm pretty sure Gary's on one of the one of the minor NFL networks or. He's doing something also. But Gary, when, when, when I went to junior high school with Gary, he was skinny. I mean, he was really skinny. He was tall and skinny. Everybody thought he was a basketball player. And then all of a sudden, I don't even remember when it was, but I was, in, I was obviously in college, and he was, I think, playing for Wake Forest or something. And I, was, I, heard, I heard his name on TV, and I'm like, Gary Balding and playing line. And I'm like, that's not even possible. He had to gain at least 120 pounds. Yeah. But he did. <laughs> yeah, well, he he did, and uh, he he played uh, for the Chiefs, the Colts, and the Bills. Yeah, and that doesn't say uh, Rich was played with him too. That's like if you and I played together on the exactly. Same team, and and Brian and Brian uh, and Brian too. Brian, Gary, and Rich. So the Boldingers, more more famous people from Massapequa. Yeah. So so anyway, back to the NFL draft. The Giants. We'll get we'll get back to locals. Uh, Made me correct last week. Because you'll remember on last week's show, brother, I said that it looked to me and felt to me like Saquon Barkley was going to be the guy. Right, and as right. it turns out, that's what happened. The first pick of Baker Mayfield by the, by the Bills, I, I, I still don't understand it. I, I still don't think it was the right pick. Um, the Cleveland GM justified it. He said he, he likes Baker Mayfield. He thinks he's a winner. He wants that mentality. He wants that rah-rah kind of guy. And they're going to ignore the various character issues and, and pretty much hope for the best. And I think in Baker Mayfield's case, he's going to be more successful at that than Johnny Manziel. Because Johnny Manziel just wanted to party. And I think Baker Mayfield has learned from the mistakes that he's made and is looking to be an NFL quarterback as opposed to Johnny Manziel just wanted to be a celebrity and just wanted to hang out with people and party in Vegas and get hammered all the time. So that that pick after that was made, to me, if I'm the Giants, as much as I love Saquon Barkley, and I think Saquon Barkley is going to be fantastic for the Giants, but I trade that pick. I, I call The first thing I do is call the Buffalo Bills and say, you want Sam Darnold, let's go. I want – both of your number ones this year, they had the 12 and the 22. I want next year's number one. I want a second and a third. And and see what they say. I know Buffalo Bills fans online, and granted, that's not that's not a GM, but I, uh, people online would have done that trade. Maybe, you know. All right? Bills fans were that desperate to move up. Did you see what they did this year with the NFL? They brought on, instead of having, like, Roger Goodell announce a lot of the stuff, they brought on other people. 
They well, brought they, on Goodell does the first round, and right. then and then, he's, and then then he's done. And then they had like uh, they brought on some Bills fan who was all dressed up. I, I think I saw that, and, and then he announced uh, one of the picks, one and then, of, like his third or fourth and the, round. The, pick or the Eagles uh, kicker. Yeah. Oh, I saw. I posted that on Facebook, and uh, he 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 trolled the uh, Dallas Cowboy was, fans over uh, Dallas. There. That was um, um, Acres. Acres who yeah. kicked for the Giants too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was awesome. But but the reasoning behind that was Drew Pearson last year, the draft was in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. And Drew Pearson did the same thing to Eagles fans. Oh, okay. So here's David Akers giving it back to the Cowboys. And uh, Justin Tuck did the same thing with, when he came out. And, and he said, I am proud to represent the greatest franchise in the NFL or in pro sports or whatever. People are booing. They're going off. And um, oh, what's his name? Um Chris Canty, he came out right. and he said he said the Giants pick, who actually was from Georgia, he said he was from Clemson. <laughs> there is a difference. Wait, that's fighting words down <laughs> south. That's fighting words. Well, he says, it was, I'm sure it was, the guy who got picked said, "What? what it are you was about? it was a nice little deal because um, I don't know. I was watching. You know, the NFL draft this year was really weird because it, it goes on forever. It was yeah, on. That's not weird. That's every year. No, but it, but it just. <laughs> It was on, you know, the first night. It was on Channel Five, Fox. It was on ESPN. It was I don't even know if it was on the NFL Network. It I probably assume it was. was. I have no idea. Uh, so it's on three different channels. Well, at least, it, at least two. It, well, it it well, you're right. Uh, but it, it, they actually did good in the ratings, considering you know. It's, it it's, always does. It does yeah. well in the ratings. It's it's a ratings bonanza. That's why at first I was I was looking for it when I heard oh the draft is going to be on Fox this year. Fine, boom! I turned on the TV. I turned on Fox Sports. They no, had no. they had like MMA or something. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Where, where's the draft? And I'm like, then I like it hit me. I, I turned on Fox Sports too. Yeah, and no. I'm like, it's still not no, there. No. And I was like, they could not have put the draft on Fox like the main yeah, Fox channel. Yeah. I hit Channel Five. There's the draft. I'm like, oh my god, this thing is huge. Well, it doesn't cost them anything. It, but they put it on their main <laughs> network There's channel. Nothing, I, I don't know. It, it's, and it probably got great ratings. It did better than it should have. Let's put it Unbelievable. That way. So let's get back to the Giants. Cultural phenomenon. Um, you know, should have they went for Darnell? You know, they. You know, with Eli, he, does he have two years left or four years left? Let, let's put it this way. Or one year left. We don't know. All right, let's put it this way. I like Darnold. I know people who don't like Darnold. John Volante, friend of the show, doesn't like Darnold at all. But that being said, Darnold, if you go to the NFL ratings, they rate every player, their scouting system, and you can check every player. Darnold was by far the highest rated quarterback. They they go on on a 1 to 10 system where like anything from a 9 to a 10 is a, is a surefire Hall of Famer. There were nobody like that in the class. Saquon Barkley was the highest rated player in this year's class. He was, I think, a 7.46 there were only five players that received grades of, of seven or above. Sam Darnold was one of them. He got a seven even. And he was, like I said, the by far the, the highest rated quarterback. I think the next rated quarterback was like a 6.19. And I know it sounds like it's a close number, but they're not. Because I mean, we're talking, the numbers will go from you know 6.82, 6.81. I mean, there's minute differences, and you could have 50 players in between those two. So... The NFL thinks that Darnold is going to be the best quarterback. Now, that, does that mean anything? Not really, because I'm sure I'm sure Ryan Leaf back in the day got a great rating from somebody. <laughs> I'm sure Jamarcus Russell got great great rating from somebody because they were number one and number two picks. But for for everything that people were looking for, and by people I mean obviously NFL GMs and teams, I just thought. Darnold was a smart pick, and I thought the Giants could have leveraged his availability because so for so long everybody thought that, that, that the Browns were just going to take Darnold first and then figure out what they were going to do with the fourth pick. But then they picked Baker Mayfield. I, I, I just thought the Giants should have said, look, as much as we like Saquon Barkley and as much as we think he's the best player in this draft, we need to trade this pick because somebody will be stupid enough to give us at least three number ones for it. And I, and I think the Giants, I think they're still, to me anyway, in a rebuilding mode. Yeah, but if you're in a rebuilding mode, let's say you do that trade, which I, actually is a pretty good trade. And I assume, I don't know what next year's quarterback crop might be. I'm not sure. So, um, but that means you're going to stick with Eli. Well, but here's here's the thing that they did. Definitely stick with Eli, which they did yeah. anyway. So. Oh, they're, they're definitely sticking with Eli for at least at least a couple of years. But here is what, what um, Gettleman did. 
he loves the kid that they picked in the fourth round, um, Kyle Loletta from uh, from Richmond. He is a Richmond Spider. Uh, that kid was was the MVP of the Senior Bowl. Is he a great quarterback? No, but he's a kid who could develop and turn into a starting quarterback. A lot, a lot of GMs liked him. Also, you still have Davis Webb on the roster. Davis Webb, who has never thrown an NFL pass, who Gettleman must like Davis Webb at least a little bit. Otherwise, I think he would have been. I think he would have picked Sam. Uh, uh, I think he would have picked Arnold. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't have made any sense to me that if if Gettleman didn't think that either Davis Webb or his plan to pick Loletta was going to be the answer, then I think Darnold would have been the pick. But they loved Saquon Barkley, and I I I think I tell you what I have all the respect in the world for Gettleman because he's he's essentially rebuilt the Giants' offensive line in one off season, which I didn't think was possible. But between between the kid in the second round, I love Will Hernandez. This kid, he just he sounds angry. And that's what you want from from an offensive lineman. One one of one of the the uh, the scouting reports on him said it, it was something to the effect of I'm not sure how to how to scout this or say this, but he basically just doesn't like people. I love that. Loved it. Yeah, I know, dude. Yeah. I want my offensive lineman to not like people. Well. I want them to punish people, bury them, put them in the ground. No, you can't say that to me. Yes, you can. No, because there's a lot of head injuries going around. That's and, it has nothing to do know. with head injuries. It has to do with blocking people. Well, it has to do with dominating them at the line. Loved it. I am loving this kid. I, I can't wait to see him play and smash people. Okay, we got three, two minutes. Tim, Big Ed's uh, getting ready. Uh, what do you want to end the show with? Uh, well, quickly, I wanted to point out that the uh, the draft lottery the, in the NHL. No, no, was held you want to talk week. soccer, right? Well, yeah, quickly. but I just wanted to we mention got two that minutes. very quickly. No, who the, cares? The Islanders got the 11th and the 12th oh, picks. Who cares? It's a month or two months well, away. But uh, we also have uh, a little bit of soccer. Uh, as I said before, uh, Saint uh, Saint Wenger's Day was today or yesterday. Yeah. Where did I put my soccer notes? Um, Tottenham is playing Watford today. Uh, in the Premier League uh, at 7 o'clock in London, 2 o'clock in New York. Uh, my brother and I will be watching the game. I'm not really sure where yet, but I we will say be. that. Yeah, we will. I don't know. Do I really <coughs> um, care? Yes. No, I don't. Yes, we do. Uh, Liverpool, your Liverpool brother, managed to uh, draw 0-0 with Stoke, or nil-nil as some would say. Right. Uh, after, and that was a few days after a resounding 5-2 victory over AS Roma in the Champions League semifinals. So I, I don't know how Liverpool, how this is the same team that, that can be in the Champions League semifinals and score five goals and then not score at all against the pathetically bad Stoke team. Um, Barcelona clinched the La Liga title on Sunday. Congratulations to them. Uh, the New York Derby is happening on Saturday at 2 o'clock when NYCFC, your favorite team, travels to Red Bull Arena for a match against the Red Bulls. Uh, and uh, I, and for, I, I have to do a little political commentary here because uh, you're, the president uh, took to Twitter to discuss the United States World Cup bid. Because he's an expert on the World Cup. And was promptly um, uh, uh, smacked down, let's say, by FIFA. FIFA, one of the most corrupt organizations in the world, actually was taking shots at Donald Trump because you're not supposed to try to influence the bid process. Of course. Everybody knows this. Except so why our president. is Donald Trump saying tell, talking about the strong bid that Canada and Mexico put together for the 2026 World Cup? It would be a shame if countries that we always support were to lobby against the US bid. Why should we be supporting these countries when they don't support us, including at the United Nations? Dude, shut up. You, you know, he, he probably just torpedoed the bid. Well, you know, he's a big soccer expert. Oh, I don't know if you know that. He needs to shut up. In, in the art of the deal, he says, I, I grew oh. up playing soccer. His kid actually is is signed with the D.C. United youth team. Who? The under 12. Barron. Barron? He is part of the D- I had I saw it on Twitter. I didn't believe it. I did the research. He is a member of the D.C. United youth squad under 12. Good to hear. I was stunned. Anyway, we got to get out of here. Big Ed is coming up next, and you know what that means. Two hours of the greatest hits you've ever heard, ever. Or maybe didn't hear. I don't know. Great great gold. Great gold. Not good gold, but great gold. I'm Rob Leonard. He is Tim Leonard. 
Thank you for listening to From the Press Box here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. This will be a podcast later on iTunes. Take care and bye-bye. The views expressed on air are not necessarily...